Hi, I'm Brian Lee Davidson Tarka, and this is another Bible reading. This time we're going to be reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 4 through 9. So we're looking at thankfulness. Paul is specifically thankful for the Christians in the Corinthian church, and he's letting them know how thankful he is for them. Now, in America, we have a very famous holiday. It's famous all over the world because people see it in, in movies and in television shows. We have the holiday of Thanksgiving. Sometimes the thanks in that is a little bit ironic because we talk about, because we see family, family discord, family squabbling, a lot of quarrels that come in. It's like, oh, we're going to have to get with that together with that crazy aunt and we're just going to have to fight. And I'm sure there are Thanksgiving households where that has happened. It's never happened in mine. Um, but I think if you had everybody just getting together and being nice, you may not have the, um, the tension that could amount to comedy that you see in a lot of American movies. So from my experience, and this may not be the experience of every American, uh, they may have the family drama at Thanksgiving. I don't really see that. Um, but even if that drama is there, I think part of the point is family is getting together and they are thankful for each other. Whether it's a nice father, family gathering or one of the crazy wacky ones that you see on American television shows, family can be thankful for the other family members that they know and they love. And we're going to see some thankfulness that Paul has for his spiritual family in the Church of Corinth. So let's begin verses 4 through 9 of chapter 1 in the book of 1 Corinthians. I always thank God for you because of his grace given to you. Let me start over. I always thank God for you because of his grace given you in Christ Jesus. For in him you have been enriched in every way in all your speaking and in all your knowledge because our testimony about Christ was confirmed in you. Therefore, do not lack any spiritual gifts as you eagerly await for our Lord Jesus Christ to be revealed. He will keep you strong to the end so that you will be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Jesus Christ, God who has called you into fellowship with his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, is faithful. So let's break that down a little bit. Paul is, is very, very thankful for his brothers and sisters in Christ here in the Church of Corinth. He says, I always thank God for you because of the grace given you in Jesus Christ. We can be thankful for our brothers and sisters in Christ. We can be thankful for other Christians. Even if there are, there exists division between us, even if we disagree on things, even if we don't see eye to eye on everything, which nobody does, we can be thankful that as Christians, we have other brothers and sisters in Christ all over the world. And it's not really about whether we agree or disagree on things theologically, we may have different opinions about the Bible, we may have different opinions about life, we may have different opinions about politics. There are so many ways that we can be divided. Some of those are good, some of those are bad, some of those we really should be indifferent towards. They're worth talking about, but they shouldn't necessarily divide us. For in him you have been enriched in every way, in all your speaking and in all your knowledge. 
because of our testimony about Christ was confirmed in you. So he's very thankful and he even tells other people about the church of Corinth. He sees how God is influencing the way they speak and and what they know, influencing their speaking and their understanding. So he's very he's very thoughtful and thankful for the spiritual fruit that he sees being produced in the church of Corinth. Therefore do not lack any spiritual gifts as you eagerly wait for our Lord Jesus Christ's return, our Lord Jesus Christ to be revealed. Now, the spiritual gifts I spoke about earlier um, in a, a few videos ago, they'll actually come later in the book of Corinthians. Eventually I'll put all these videos together in a playlist and in that playlist that video will come after this one. So if you're watching this from the pay playlist you can look a little bit uh, further down and you'll see a little bit about spiritual giftedness. But he also talks about that being uh, something that they should have and I guess we're meant to meant to be used in a way that Christians can encourage each other via a variety of forms of help and communication. But these are supposed to keep us content as we wait for Jesus Christ's return. And that's another common theme, uh, even though Christians may often disagree as to what that return of Christ looks like. There's a very, very popular one in America that is often put forward by Hollywood because it's very entertaining. Uh, you see these sort of Christian apocalypses where um, it's, it's the end of the world, but Christians are the heroes. And um, that's generally what is called premillennialism. Um, we're, we're here, we're living, we're waiting for Jesus to come back and rule. And uh, in America, that's probably the most prevalent, the most, uh, most common way of looking at end times theology. It, it certainly makes for exciting stories and, and movies. Um, there's also post-millennialism, which believes that the reign of Christ, the thousand-year reign of Christ has already happened, and uh, now we're here waiting for Christ to return. Uh, the, the rule has happened, and now we're, now the good Christians are just uh, waiting for Christ to come back. Um, not just good, but all Christians. Not all Christians are good. Um, Paul, uh, you can see that as Paul is correcting quite a few of them here in the book of Corinthians. Now, the third, um, and this is the category I fall into, is amillennialism. Um, I don't really, I mean, uh, literally the amillennial means no millennial reign, but I do, I believe more. it's more metaphorical. I believe that when I when I read the book of Revelation and read about the end times, I see a lot of lessons that we can be looking to in our contemporary history. I see a lot of things. Um, you will hear wars and rumors of wars, and um, a variety of the apocalyptic things happen. We've seen happen in history, and we see happen now. So, for me, I feel that the book of Revelation is, is, af is very, has very contemporary applications and helps us to, to deal with events that are happening around us and often beyond us. Still, I'm looking forward to Christ's return as much as any, and I feel that one of the things that should not divide people is difference 
differences in opinion on end times theology. I think we, it's the standard is we all feel that Jesus, the standard belief is that we, if you're a Christian, you believe Jesus is coming back someday. And um, that's going to be a very glorious time. Now, but getting divided over it, I don't believe helps. And that's one of the things that I'm looking forward to in, um, in my church is trying to make specific steps to not to be educated but not divided about a lot of subjects that we that we find in the Bible and that we find in life. So that's that's my hope. That's that's one of my many hopes for uh, these uh, church planning endeavors that I have going on. So and uh, hopefully um, sometime maybe later next month uh, we'll be able to start having some some proper Bible studies um, again. Right now things it's just not the right time to be starting those Bible studies uh, but when I do we'll probably be studying the Gospel of Luke as the as the first book that we study. But thank but uh, thankfulness I think it's important to note not, not I think it is important to see to note to see that even though Paul is going to be correcting people in the church of Corinth even though he's going to be giving a lot of instruction even though he's he's deeply concerned about the disorganization in the church um, and a lot of the things people are doing he still loves them there is still a very sincere love for the Church of Corinth, and it, it's out of that love that he's sending this letter in regards to the correction that they need. But he's still thankful for them. He's thankful for them beyond the division that they're experiencing. And I think that's how we have to look at our brothers and sisters in Christ, whether they come from any number of, of backgrounds, uh, church backgrounds, we can be thankful that it's Christ on the cross that is, is being expressed, accepted, and that grace is changing people's lives. If we see Christ taking away our sins in the Bible and believe that our sins are forgiven by Christ then we are under that grace that we have observed. The gospel is something that is very very simple but it is also of infinite depth as it and that's why I love exploring God because there there is an infinite amount of depth there that we can observe in the Bible, that we can observe in creation, that we can observe in each other because people are made in the image of God. So that's another reason to be respectful and thankful for the fingerprints of God that we see on humanity. So I thank God for you. Thank you for watching this video and we'll keep making more more kind of uh, rough off the cut videos that that go through the Bible. Uh, take care and I'll see you for the next time when we're going to actually speak more specifically on the subject of division in the church. I think that's going to be fun. All right, take care, la revedere, papa, sayonara, and find the stop recording button there. Okay. Bye-bye.